Summary of the Grass is Singing by Doris Lessing The story of the grass is singing takes place in 1940s southern Rhodesia, which is now called Zimbabwe. Mary Turner, Dick Turner's wife, was killed, and a houseboy has admitted to doing it. Dick and Mary are poor, and they don't hang out with any of the other white farmers in their area. When Mary's body is found, the Turner's neighbor, Charlie Slatter, writes to Sergeant Denham, who is in charge of the local police. Denham then sends six native cops to the Turner's farm, where Moses, the houseboy, turns himself in soon after they arrive. Charlie drives to the Turner's farm, where he finds Moses in handcuffs, and puts Dick in the back of his car. Tony Marston, who works for Charlie, tells people inside the house that he found Mary's body on the porch. Sergeant Denham shows up, and he and Charlie ask Tony some questions. Tony starts to think that they aren't really interested in what he has to say, though, and the conversation ends quickly. The cops carry Mary's body to the car, and Tony wonders if he should insist on telling Charlie and Sergeant Denham his idea about why Mary was killed. Moses will be killed no matter what, but Tony wonders if he is part of a monstrous injustice if he keeps quiet. Tony packs up his things the next day and leaves the farming area. At the trial, it is decided that Moses killed Mary because he was drunk and wanted to steal her belongings. Tony, on the other hand, works for a short time as a copper miner before being forced to take a job in an office. The first part of Chapter 2 talks about the shops that are all over Southern Africa. They are simple stores that sell food, clothes, and other things that people need. They also usually have a bar. Since Mary's father was an alcoholic, he would spend the family's little money on alcohol at the store. This made Mary's parents fight all the time. When Mary was a child, her older brother and sister died of dysentery. The time after that was the happiest time of her childhood, because her parents stopped fighting for a while. Mary was sent to boarding school in the end, and at 16 she chose to leave home. Mary's parents died between the ages of 20 and 25, and she was happy to be totally on her own. She lived in a place for young women and worked in an office as a personal secretary. Mary's friends got married and had kids as time went on, but Mary stayed single, happy, and relaxed. She didn't want to believe she was getting older, so she still dressed in little girl fashion. She didn't want to get married, but one day she heard some of her married friends talking badly about the fact that she wasn't married. She was shocked to learn that this was what people thought of her because she wasn't married. After this, she was briefly engaged to a widower who was 55 years old, but they broke up when he tried to have sex with her. Soon after this, Mary sees Dick for a short time at the movies on one of his short trips to town. Dick is a poor farmer who has had so much bad luck that people call him Jonah. He doesn't want to get married because he is poor, but he can't stop thinking about Mary. Over the next few months, he works himself to the point of fatigue and then shows up at Mary's door to ask her to marry him. They get married two weeks after she says yes. When Mary goes to Dick's farm for the first time, she finds the house closed, dark, and stuffy, which shows her how lonely Dick is. They have tea and talk to each other in a nice but strange way. They have sex, which isn't as bad as Mary thought it would be, but she also feels nothing while it's happening. In the morning, Dick presents Mary to Samson, a black house worker who has worked for him for a long time. Dick definitely cares about Samson, but Mary is offended by the way Samson acts right away. Mary decides to learn Kitchen Kaffir, a shortened version of the native Shona language that white farmers use to talk to the black people who work for them. Mary spends her days making and painting the house. She buys fabrics and other things for the house with the money she has saved. One day, she thinks Samson stole the raisins she had been saving to make pudding. She goes crazy, and even though Dick tries to stop her, she insists on taking the money out of Samson's pay. Dick is upset because Samson quits. They hire a new helper, but he quits soon after. Then they find a third helper. This one is used to working for white women and does what Mary tells her in a blank, robotic way. But in a fit of anger, Mary makes the helper scrub the brass bathtub for hours, even though it was already clean. 
she even makes him work through his lunch break. Charlie and Mrs. Slatter come over to see Mary. Mrs. Slatter is nice to Mary, but Mary isn't interested in talking to her. The servant quits. A few days later, Charlie tells Dick that he should plant tobacco, but Dick says no. One day, when Dick and Mary go to the train station to get food, they meet a man who calls Dick Jonah. After the man leaves, Dick admits bitterly that he took money from the man and still owes 50 pounds to him. During this time, Dick becomes obsessed with having different animals on the farm, starting with bees, then pigs, and finally turkeys. All of these projects fail, which makes Dick and Mary fight a lot. Dick starts to joke about calling Mary boss, which makes her angry. Dick decides to open a Kaffir store on the farm, even though there is already a Kaffir store nearby and it is unlikely that Dick's store will make much money. He asks Mary to run the store. At first, she says she would rather die, but she finally agrees. Mary thinks it's gross that the native women sit outside the shop with their kids, and she hates having to work there. She starts to imagine running away and going back to her old life in town. One day, she sees that the office where she used to work is looking for a shorthand writer. She packs a bag and leaves the next day. She asks Charlie to drive her to the train station. Mary goes to the girls' club where she used to live when she gets back to town, but she is told that they don't let married women in. At her old office, they tell her that the typing job has already been taken. When Mary gets back to her room, she sees that she doesn't have enough money to pay the bill. Dick shows up at this moment and begs her to come home. Mary does agree. At first, Dick and Mary go back to their old ways, but soon Dick gets very sick with a high fever. Charlie calls a doctor, who tells Mary in a rude way that she and Dick need to get rid of bugs and take a three-month vacation to get better. During this time, Mary starts to watch over the farm workers because Dick is sick and stuck in bed. She brings a sandbox with her, and when Moses, one of the farm workers, insists on getting a drink of water, she hits him in the face with it. She also doesn't pay people who come to work late, which makes some of them quit on the spot. Back at the house, Mary tells Dick to put all of his attention on growing tobacco so that they can make enough money to leave the farm. Before he agrees to start building tobacco barns, Dick thinks about it for three days. Dick makes the tobacco barns, but there is a drought in January, which kills the tobacco. Dick can't pay his bills, so he has to get a loan so he doesn't have to file for bankruptcy. Mary's health is getting worse. She starts to beg Dick for a child, but Dick says they can't have one because they don't have enough money. Mary gets more and more unhappy, and so does Dick, who starts smoking a lot. When another house worker quits, Dick has to bring Moses in from the field because no one else will work for Mary. Mary becomes interested in Moses. She watches him do his job and even stares at him while he washes himself outside one day. He stops what he's doing and stares back at her until she leaves. This makes Mary very angry, so she makes Moses do a bunch of things that don't need to be done. She asks Dick if they can fire Moses, but he says no in a very angry way. As the months go by, Mary feels worse and worse. One day, Moses tells her he's leaving, and she starts crying and pleading with him to stay. Moses gives her a glass of water, tells her to lie down on the bed, and puts her coat over her. He never talks about leaving again. Then, their relationship changes. Moses becomes much more casual and dominant with Mary, and Mary feels fully under his control. During this time, Mary starts having terrible dreams, and Dick gets malaria. She dreams that Dick has died, that Moses is touching her, and that her father is making sexual moves on her. In one dream, Moses and her father become the same person, which makes her wake up screaming. Moses asks her why she is afraid of him, and Mary says in an emotional voice that she is not scared. In the meantime, Dick and Mary's neighbors have started talking about them in a mean way. Charlie comes over one day and tells Dick that he should sell his farm. Charlie stays for dinner, where he sees Moses and Mary acting like they know each other and are flirting. Charlie then pulls Dick aside and tells him in a firm voice that he and Mary have to leave. 
Dick agrees reluctantly, and Charlie tells Tony to start working on Dick's farm so that Charlie can take over. Tony starts to think that Mary has gone crazy and needs to see a counselor while he is living on the Turner's farm. One day, he sees Moses helping Mary get dressed, and he is shocked by the idea that they might be dating. He tells Dick to get rid of Moses, but Moses goes that night and doesn't come back. Mary wakes up all of a sudden two nights before Dick and Mary are supposed to leave the farm. She walks around the house feeling crazy and nervous, and her emotions are all over the place. She goes looking for Moses because she is sure that he will finish her that night. The next day, Mary is meant to pack, but she falls asleep instead and wakes up in the late afternoon. She gets a strange urge to go to the store, where she finds Moses. She runs away yelling, and when she runs into Tony, he tells her kindly that he told Dick to take her to a doctor. Mary doesn't eat dinner with Tony and Dick that night. Dick tells her in bed that she's sick, and Mary says that she's always felt sick inside. After Dick goes to sleep, Mary gets up and creeps around the house, sure that Moses is there. She goes outside and sees Moses off in the distance from the porch. He walks up to her, covers her mouth with his hand, and stabs her to death. Moses thinks for a moment about saying he is innocent, but then decides to turn himself in. Until morning, he waits outside the house. About the author Doris Lessing was born in Iran. Soon after Lessing was born, her family went to Zimbabwe. There, her father hoped to get rich by farming. But he failed, and the family stayed poor. Lessing quit school when she was 13 and left home when she was 15. She moved to Salisbury, which is now called Harare, the capital of southern Rhodesia, where she worked as a telephone operator, got married, and had two children. Lessing got rid of her first husband, remarried, had another child, and then got rid of her second husband. In 1949, she went to London with her youngest son and only 20 pounds and the draft of her first book, The Grass is Singing. Here, Lessing started working for communism, against racism, and against nuclear weapons. Because of this, the British intelligence services kept an eye on her for 20 years. The book The Grass is Singing came out in 1950. She went on to write more than 50 more books, some of which were written under the name Jane Summers. Because they had to do with the British Empire, Lessing turned down an OBE and a damehood. She was given the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2007. She was 94 when she died in 2013. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.